Radio. This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. This show is brought to you by Pet King Brands, the makers of Zymox and Oratine. It's Behave with Arden Moore, the show that teaches you how to have harmony in the household with your pets. Join Arden as she travels coast to coast to help millions better understand why cats and dogs do what they do. Get the latest scoop on famous faces. They're perfectly pampered pets in Who's Walking Who in Rin Tin, Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails. Garner great pet tips and have a doggone fur-flying fun time. So get ready for the pause and applause as we unleash your all-behave host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome to the All-Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. You're in for a treat today, listeners. That's because today's guest is a renowned veterinarian and an accomplished musician. And he's back on our show with a new song or two. And he is, of course, Dr. Jeff Levy. Welcome back, Dr. Jeff. Thanks, Arden. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here again. And uh, always happy to, to say hello and to the uh, pet fanciers out there. All right. Hey, guys. Dr. Jeff is here to boost all our moods. He's got a new song called 21st Century Pet. And he also is going to play for us Show Your True Stripes. Hey, you kitty cats. That's a good one. He's got ways to boost our moods, all of us, during this crazy, crazy pandemic. But first, I have some great news for your wallet. What? If you place any order for Zymox or Oratine products on their website and enter the code ARDEN10 at checkout, that's A-R-D-E-N-T-N and the number 10 at checkout, you're going to get 10% off through May 31st. So just dash over after the show to www.ardeen.com. Zymox.com. That's Z Y M O X.com. Nice? Right. Hey, everybody, sit and stay. We're going to be right back after we take this commercial break. Time for a pause. For furry ones, actually, sit and stay. All Behave will be right back. Pause up, everyone. Arden Moore here, the host of the O Behave Show. Raise your paw if you love frozen desserts. I know I do. And so do my canine trio of Bujo, Kona, and Emma. They drool with delight when offered this sweet treat. And now all dogs will have plenty to yap about. That's because Ben & Jerry's has just unleashed not one, but two doggy desserts. Your dog can enjoy the Ponce Mix made with peanut butter and pretzel swirls or Rosie's Batch made with pumpkin and mini cookies. Or put a little of both in their bowl. Yum, yum for the tum-tum. Now, when you treat yourself to a bowl of your favorite Ben & Jerry's ice cream, mine is the classic Cherry Garcia, your dogs can enjoy the Ponce Mix or Rosie's Batch or a blend of both. Do you know what time it is? Why, it's Ben & Jerry's time. I see happy Bujo, Kona, and Emma heading my way. Check out the Ben & Jerry's doggy desserts at benjerry.com. That's B-E-N-J-E-R-R-Y.com. Pause up. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. All Behave is back with more tail-wagging ways to achieve harmony in the household with your pets. Now, back to your fetching host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome back to the All Behave show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. He's back. I'm talking about Dr. Jeffrey Levy. He is a New York City veterinarian. He operates a company called House Call Vet NYC, and he's an acupuncturist. And a musician. I'm waiting for him to say you're a linguine chef. I mean, I don't know. Actually, I am. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I did live in Italy oh my gosh. for a couple of years. Linguini was not necessarily, a, I was more of a risotto chef. I was oh, like, risotto no, man. No, you're a risotto man. All right. You're a resonance. A, re a renaissance. Uh, yeah. well, I was in one of the couple of days I was in Florence when I was in the renaissance. Oh, I've been to Firenze. That's a yeah. nice, nice yeah. city. Yeah. The Diamo. There you go. Yeah. That's where uh, the, uh, the Duomo is where uh, actually I learned my Italian in, in Florence. And Florence is noted for having the perfect Italian. And oh. every place else in Italy compares itself to Florence and how it's spoken. 
All I knew is that I didn't know whether it was I or an E at the end for the bathrooms, and I kept going into the wrong bathroom. Oh, really? <laughs> and saying, scoozy. Woman y donna. Woman, womo donna. You know, interesting pet facts about Florence. If they have a special breed of cattle in oh, just in Tuscany. Really? It's, a, you, it's probably the largest breed, one of the largest breeds in the world. It's called Kianina. That's with a C-H. Kianina. It's a huge white bull that has won worldwide championships in terms of size, but that's their favorite breed of bull, Kianina. Well, there you go. And that's no bull, right? That's Dr. no bull. Jeff? That's, the, that's the Florence, the Italian animal fact for the, uh, for the day. Hey, I woke up today going, I hope I learned something about Italian bulls today. And voila, you are here. You have so many, so many talents, Dr. Jeff. And I know you were on our show a few years back. And I'm really happy that you're here today. We've got to do some catching up. So first of all, let's do the, the veterinary part. It's been a crazy time with the pandemic and especially in a big city like New York. What's, what's been happening? How are things going for you in your house call practice? Well, the practice is, to be honest, I've been busier than ever. It was um, sort of challenging way back before the summer and the summer when the pandemic really crippled New York. And right. how I did it was I continued to do house calls, but they were sort of in the park. Uh, I'd meet people on this. I acupunctured one cat in a hallway in a building, or actually two wow. cats. I uh, saw people on their stoops outside of their buildings, met them in the park. So we did a lot of outside work. The uh, weather cooperated. And rather than taking mass transit to meet my patients, I would do it by bicycle. So, really? Yeah. If you go to my Facebook page, um, House Bowl Vet NYC, okay. um, you'll see various pictures of me on the bicycle uh, attempting to dodge buses and, and, and taxis. It had been a while since I'd been on my bicycle, but it worked out. We had a great time and was able to see my patients. That, I love that because look at that determination. You're like, have pedals, we'll heal, right? Yeah, yeah it will cycle. And it was a special, I learned a lot about my patients. I learned how much they really enjoy being outdoors and it was sort of this natural environment and doing acupuncture. It worked out very well. In fact, it was a kitten or a cat named Muffin, who I'll give a quick shout out to. Hey, Muffin. Muffin, 22 years, just celebrated his 22nd birthday. Wow. And he would come out. This is a cat. Well, he would walk out into onto the stoop, lay down, and we would do his acupuncture needles, and he would just enjoy the summer weather outdoors and have a, his geriatric tune-up outside. Hey, speaking of pets, I heard you are now entering the wonder year. You got a couple under one years old. You wonder where your sanity is going, right? What's going on? That's a good one. I have two new arrivals. Uh, okay. They're both from the city shelter, a big adoption. I really believe in adoption. And I have two new kitties who are delighting my six and a, six and a half year old daughter. Is that uh, Valentina? Yeah, Valentina. Oh. I love that name. That's beautiful. Yes. And um, we have the first arrival. His name was Joey, but professionally he's known as Yin. Why? You being an acupuncturist? Acupuncturally speaking, he's Yin, which is the fluid, the feminine, the relaxing side of the yin yang cycle. Okay. Uh, yin is about five months old. He, I call him a Siamese style cat. He sort of looks Siamese. He's got a mask and he's got the points, but we really don't know what his is. Is he a background. talker? No, actually not. Oh. Su surprising. And that's why, he, you know, maybe the real Siamese will come out of him one day. Me now. Yeah. Oh. He can do backup for you with your songs. Can that's you right. That? He certainly could. We'll, we'll train him. He's doing vocals now. They've got piano playing cats. Why can't we have a, a cat in a rock band? There you go. Well, right now, yes, he's tried piano. He walks across the keyboard when we're tuning up and uh, he's scratching. He might get you a new tune. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe even better than what I can write. And who's the other guy? So Yin showed up and then we had the week after that, we had Yang, who's three months old. And my daughter has named him not really Nacho because she believes he looks like a, a nacho chip. I hope she doesn't dip them. No, and um, they're doing that. They're really, we're really enjoying them. And but the downside of being the little one, Nacho, she discovered that he fits perfectly into her little doll carriage. Oh so no! He's being strolled around the house all day. And luckily, he's very good natured. So uh, well, that's actually good. And you, you have another cat, I think, who was responsible for introducing you to your wife. Yes, Tom. Tom has has to over the bridge, but. Okay. Um, 
Tom was, uh, in fact, when we had our um, wedding, we had a best man, but our very best man was Tom. Nice. And I know he couldn't come to the, uh, he wasn't allowed into the hall for them. And we thought it'd be a little stressful for him. But there was a photo, a portrait of him in the entry, saluting him as very best man, because he certainly, uh, he introduced us. And quick story on Tom, and I don't know how much detail I can give you, but Tom was my wife, Rocio. Her sister worked for me in the animal hospital, and she was the tech. Okay. And we had a bunch. One day we come into the animal hospital. It was way uptown. And there's a box of dehydrated, weak little kittens. And we brought them in in the morning and we revived them. We gave them fluids. We bottle fed them. And at the end of the day, everybody was asked to take a kitten home to feed them overnight. So oh. everybody took them home and they, they all made it. And one day, a year later, Rocio's sister says to her, well, it's time for Tom shots. She goes, Okay, he's a year old. Take and Rocio says, I'll take him down the block for the shots. He goes, No, 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 you must take him to Dr. Levy, his vet. Yeah. And Rocio brought Tom to me for shots. We had a little conversation. We both speak Italian, so we had a, an Italian conversation. Ah. And the rest of the- <laughs> How long have you guys been married? Seven years, something like that. You better say seven years, definitely. <laughs> I think eight years, eight years. Eight years, okay, good, good, good. You're just playing, that's all right. It's, it's hey. the in-laws know the real numbers. You know, sometimes marriage could be, you don't know where you are with things. But Hey, and in COVID, everybody keeps saying, I just want to see 2020 in the rear view. Exactly. So everybody's losing concepts of time, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. And it's, uh, and it, uh, but I hopefully we're starting to claw our way out of this a little bit, so... Well, one thing that I'm really excited about you being on our show today is, listeners, this is a radio show. This is time for your ears to go, ah. So um, what we're going to do today is Dr. Jeff has a new song out. It's called 21st Century Pet. And uh, we are going to tune that up right now with the help of my executive producer, Mark Winter. Before we hit the play button, Dr. Levy, can you give us an idea about what this song is about just to tee everybody up? Well, the song, the idea of the song, to be honest, began after 9-11, if you can remember way back when. And, you know, the tragedy of 9-11. And then with time, we had other things like tsunamis, if you remember that in Japan. We had a big blackout in New York City. We had some global warming thrown in there. We had some forest fires. <laughs> I know. And then we topped it off with COVID. Yay! All right. <laughs> oh, so party. But through all of this, through all of this, through all of this, there was one constant. There was one constant that sort of helped me keep my sanity and everybody else's sanity I knew. It was their pet. Yep, exactly. So I wrote the song 21st Century Pet talking about there may be this bad and the evil and scariness outside, but there's nothing like turning the key to your door, walking in and having your dog or cat say hi to you when you come in. And it's that coziness of home life, uh, that security of home life. And it's basically what our pets give to us. Of course, we have to feed them and do something for them, but basically the wealth of humanity that awaits us behind the door when we get home, that makes it all sort of worthwhile at the end. And uh, I can't thank our pets enough. I can't thank the people that keep their pets enough. And I think it's, I just wanted to celebrate that bond we have with our animal friends. And I tried to put it into words and music. You didn't try, man. You succeeded. Um, you. We also want to let you guys know that the 21st Century Pet can be viewed on YouTube. We're going to have the details on a Pet Life Radio O Behave page when we do the bio with Dr. Jeff Levy. But right now, with the help of our executive producer, Mark Winter, let's all tune in to 21st Century Pet by Dr. Jeff Levy. <laughs>
there. I'm trying to do my... <laughs> You know, there's three versions of it, is it. I'm not sure which one he's picking. I hope he doesn't pick the one in Spanish because I'm learning uh, Spanish through Duolingo. And I do sound Italian now when I speak Spanish, which is so fun with all my Hispanic friends. I keep trying to talk with them. <laughs> They're laughing. I do know how to say yo hablo espanol, yo hablo espanol, aprende espanol or something. I'm learning yeah. Spanish. Despacio, por favor. My wife is Peruvian. So, oh, so she's so, probably laughing at my uh, no, very no, bad no, enunciation. But my, uh, the grandmother, when she comes over, the word is despacito. Por despacito. Despacito. Ito takes Ito. the word softer. Despacito, por favor. There you go. See, I can spell it. I can read it. Course, I can uh, write it, but um, I'm doing my best. So every day I try to uh, practice. And that's what I've done during uh, the pandemic. I'm on a like over 200 in 72 days streak on Duolingo. I'm doing um, the Rosetta Stone in Mandarin. Oh, can you say something with a pet theme in Mandarin? Uh, yeah, I could try. I, I was, you know, I, I, you, you want to talk about it later. I, I was in China a year and a half ago and I had, a, I, I went to discover my, uh, my Eastern medical roots, honestly. Oh, uh, wow. And I, had, I took about six months in Mandarin before I went there. Wow, I'm impressed. That's a challenge, but, but it's beautiful. I mean, it's, so say something like uh, I have a beautiful uh, cats or dogs, or say something with a cat or dog in it. Okay. Wo, yo, iga, mao, he, go. I know Mao's cat. That's it. What did you just say? Please say you did not eat cat or dog, right? No, no. Wo, wo. Uh -huh, wo. Yo. Yo. Iga. Uh, I, iga, mao. Iga, mao. He, he. And um, go. Go, dog. Wo, okay. um, wo, she won. I like. Wo, wo, I, wo, I, I love. Wo, I, wo, da, yeah. Uh, wo, I, wo, da, mao, he, um, go. I, I, I love my dog and cat. I think I said it right. I would need my. Well, you know, our show is all over the globe. We got half a million listeners. So, all you Mandarin fans, help out the good doctor. I hope he did well. But that's a, thank you for sharing that. I didn't expect we were going to talk Mandarin. Today. If anybody <laughs> in China or the uh, or in Asia would like to correspond in very simple. Mandarin phonetically, I would love the challenge. All right. We are going to put uh, your information on uh, the bio section of this episode. And I do want everybody to know to go to housecallvetnyc.com after the show. That's also his uh, Facebook page name too. So Dr. Jeff Levy, we're going to take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, you're going to play live for our beautiful listeners a song that you're calling Show Your True Stripes about all those cool cats out there. But first, we got to take this commercial break. So sit, purr, whatever you need to do. We'll be right back. Time for a walk on the red carpet, of course. All Behave will be back in a flash right after these messages. Hey, pet pals, Arden Moore here. Welcome to spring and summer, the onset of itchy skin and allergy season. Is your pet dealing with itchy skin, hot spots, and even ear infections? Help is here. It is Zymox shampoo and conditioner to the rescue. Not only is this a shampoo and conditioner great for general bathing and healthy skin support, but it is the go-to shampoo and conditioner for itchy pets. Its patented enzyme formula is loaded with antibacterial and antifungal properties to ease the itch and stop the scratching. And as an added bonus, Zymox shampoos and conditioners give off a lovely, pleasant non-medicine smell. For over 20 years, Zymox products have been helping pets find relief for many health conditions. All Zymox skin and ear products get their effectiveness from enzymes. Zymox contains no antibiotics and no petroleum byproducts, just the soothing power of enzymes. Zymox can be found at your veterinary clinic, most pet specialty stores, and online. To learn more, dash over to www.zymox.com. That's Z-Y-M-O-X for your pet's sake. 
Let's Talk Pets. Let's Talk Pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Hi, this is Rosalind Kind, and I want to get you all to tune in to Arden Moore on the All Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. Come out, come out, wherever you are. We're back from the lot. Just checked the paper and we had a record showing at the box. The letterbox, that is. Now back to OBA. Here's Arden. Hey, everybody. We're um, about to have a mini concert here on the Behave show on Pet Life Radio with Dr. Jeffrey Levy. He is an accomplished musician and a house call veterinarian in New York City. And Dr. Jeff, this song you're going to play for us live is called Show Your True Stripes. What's the 411 on that? Show your true stripes. When we used to perform it live, I used to say it was dedicated to all the pussy cats and the tom cats out there in the audience. So okay. uh, some people thought it was the naughty song. Uh, it was a, no, it was a family friendly show we would always do, but we had a little. And uh, what, whatever you wear, it's a perfect fit. Leather, feather, long hair Honey, you're so in Whatever you wear You look so bright Put on your leopard spots Tiger, show you your stripes Whenever you eat I want to feed you, my dear. Spices of the or sweet. Ice cream, red wine, and beer. Whatever you like, I will order for you. Eat it in or take out. Let me read your menu. I like that lyric. Okay. Whenever you play, uh, you know what? I think I'll do the acapella at the end. Okay. Whenever you play, I want to join the game, a make believe house where you're the little French maid. Whenever you play, everybody will win. Be my fantasy nurse, or oh, Dr. Feelgood is in. Okay, so that's... Uh, Wait a minute, I gave a pause up. The four-leggers in the house are going, me, wow, me, wow. Arden, would you like to hear a little segment of... Uh, I have another one, which is about pet loss, which is, um, which is a, a big topic that, you know, I see as a house call that... If you want to do a little, a little part of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. This is actually a song we're working on now. Okay. And we're producing it. It's called Walk With You. All right. Tell me, Mr. Vet Man, has my best friend gotten hold? One could equal seven in dog years, I'm often told. His muzzle's all gone gray. He sleeps and seldom plays. Doctor to a lifetime, can you add just one more day? And I walk with you, yes, I'll walk with you, mostly in the sunshine, now it's in the rain. Send my thoughts to you, hope to pull you through. When I make my prayers, I will say your name. So that's a little teaser of the song we're working on. I like it. You know, pets are so much part of our family and part of our fabric, part of our hearts. I got married a few years ago and we have the furry Brady Bunch and we've got two seniors, two middle-agers and two kids. And it's the cycle of life. And yeah. uh, 
I really think, man, I don't want this to be a downer because I know you are one compassionate dude. And I think music is helping you through some tough times. Absolutely. Being a veterinarian, it's not an easy job. Not at all. Or do you want me to read you? I can also read you something since you're in Texas. I think you may relate to it. I wrote a little country western one called okay. Rabbit Ears. Rabbit Ears. Yeah, okay. You know, does anybody out there know what rabbit ears are or were? Well, when I was really young, and because I'm so old, yeah. that was how we fixed our TV so exactly. we could watch the black Very and white. Good. So I, I decided to, because the rule of all my songwriting was to, it has to do with animals in some way, shape, or form. So I said, I was looking okay. at the TV and I was thinking about rabbit ears. So I wrote, say goodbye to my old rabbit ears. Worked so well all those years. Say goodbye to my old rabbit ears. Times have changed. So I hear. So it's all digitized, pixelated my eyes. That being old and electronic view. USBs, modems, please kindly put me at ease when my senses want something that's new. Say goodbye to my old rabbit ears. Work so well all those years. Say goodbye to my old rabbit ears. Times have changed. So I hear. Nice. Now we stream and Roku and all that. Hey, yeah. we just have a few minutes left, Dr. Jeff. I wanted to talk to you a little bit. Is there a few things you, you know, we touched on this at the beginning of the show, just how powerful our dogs, cats, and hamsters and everything else have been for us during this pandemic. What are some messages you'd like to leave? Obviously, the power of music is very evident for not only two-leggers, but for pets too, right? right so right. when you play a song and your cats are listening, I mean, what's going on, you think? Put on your veterinarian hat and your musician hat. Well, I think that animals really, you know, as you know, the, the hearing of animals is very keen. They're very, they have sort of ultrasonic hearing in certain ways. The sound is part of their life. I mean, right. if, if you have a kitty that's fast asleep, and there's a noise in the house. Some of those ears are working. You ever see those ears flickering? Oh, yeah. Through? Oh, yeah. Well, when I try to sneak a Cheeto with nobody listening in the house, they rat me out. Well, there's no better way to wake up the cat, the, the cat that's in deep sleep, than popping open a can. I mean, somehow they oh. hear it, right? And they, they all show up in, in a moment's time. And, and dogs are the same way. How many dogs lay in woof, woof, when they hear yeah. the elevator in the apartment building? Woof, woof. Yep. Or the garbage chute in the building, you know, they, it's just instinctual. And that's part of their survival mechanism. Uh, that's part of their, their senses where they live life. So they really share the, the world is sound. I mean, one of the most important um, attributes we have besides sight and smell and sound and touch, it's, it's, one of the, it's one of the filters of the world around us. How did you get into music? I, I can't remember because I know you were on our show a few years ago, but... Oh, yeah. that's quite a skill set to have. And being a veterinarian is no, no cakewalk in college. I know that. Yeah. But what drew you to music? And did you have anybody in your family? Well, no, actually, no. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I, when I was a kid, you know, actually the Beatles, I mean, and the, the good music that was out there. But one of the elements that kick-started me again is when I was in vet school, I went to Mississippi State Veterinary College. College of Veterinary Medicine, Mississippi State. Go dogs, D A W G S. Dogs, dogs. Go dogs. Dogs. And um, beside one of my, as a vet student, one of my tasks was to uh, take care of the bulldog before the football games. Oh, the mascot. Oh, yeah, cool. the mascot. Bully Six, I believe it was. But I had an incredible opportunity to live and work a bit in the state of Mississippi. And I drove out and I actually worked with um, catfish farmers and farmers out in the Mississippi Delta. And it was an extraordinary experience to really enter the world of the Mississippi Delta. And I got inspired to pick up the guitar again. Nice. And nice. the history. And then when I got back and I went into practice, I started to running into musicians who also were pet owners. And I got reactivated in terms of music and then decided, hey, why not meld my two big interests? 
care for animals with music and try to put it all together. I know it sounds like, a, you know, some sort of crazy project, but I said, if I, let me see if I can unite these two. How about crazy good? Yeah, I mean, maybe Jeff. crazy good. And then yeah. things went a little crazier. I started playing music and I, then I met some uh, Bernadette Peters and Mary Tyler Moore, you know, the sound and stage. And, two major animals. Yeah, animal and, and they, they saw us playing a pop. I said, you guys are great. They were like little kids. So I said, well, maybe I should pursue it. And then I ended up getting into the musical theater workshop of BMI, which was a great honor. And, and they, they had me as an auditor because I really didn't have the real qualification. I was sort of self-taught. And um, I was exposed to the talents and I got to play cabaret and, uh, and then I stuck to it, I guess. Well, keep, keep sticking to it. Everybody, we're speaking with Dr. Jeffrey Levy. I want you after the show to go to House Call Vet NYC on Facebook and his website. You're going to see all the talent and be able to hear some of the songs he has produced, including the newest one, 21st Century Pet. I'm glad you came back on the show, Dr. Jeff. Yeah, Arden, and it's, uh, I hope we once again meet in the Upper West Side like we did many, many years. Yes, ago. we're overdue. Come on, COVID. Bye-bye. I hope every day that passes, we all get better together, safer. Don't you think? I agree. I agree. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to shake hands uh, personally yeah. again in the near future. That's true. That's true. I would like that, Dr. Jeff. And at this time, I want to give a big shout out to our producer, Mark Winter. He is the executive producer of Pet Life Radio. I call him the Wizard of Paws because our network, Pet Life Radio, is the largest pet network on the planet. And humbly, our show you're listening to right now is the longest running pet podcast on the planet. That's a lot of peas, isn't there, Dr. Jeff? That's a lot, but it's certainly worth pronouncing. Uh, nothing. It's <laughs> marvelous news. Hey guys, um, we uh, we love you. We're so glad everybody tunes in from all over the world. We may have gotten some more folks from China thanks to Dr. Jeff's greetings today in Mandarin. You never know. You never uh, know, and we'll see if I got it right. But I I welcome the critique. Uh, all right, my friends in China. So until next time, guys, this is your flea free host Arden Moore delivering just two words to all you two three and four leggers out there all behave coast to coast and around the world it's all behave with arden moore find out why cats and dogs do the things they do and get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails in rin tin tinseltown from famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars you'll get great tail wagging pet tips and have a fur flying fun time all behave with america's pet edutainer arden moore every week on demand only on PetLifeRadio.com.